What's going on team? Welcome to the garage. This garage is 16 meters long by 14 meters wide. Yeah, it looks small, but it's because I'm absolutely massive. This is what it looks like when you're up close. For everyone that's met me, you know how big I am. Uh, tonight in the garage, you know, the open's coming up, but honestly, fitness is not a priority. You know, in lockdown, I think a lot of you guys know it, you just want to come out of lockdown looking massive, like absolutely swollen. Also, it gives you an excuse like today, I literally didn't want to hurt in conditioning, so I was like, you know what, we're going to do a good old CrossFit pump session. We ain't going to turn into Ronnie Coleman, but we might turn into like Dan Bailey in his prime, which is now. Guys, swollen. CrossFit. <laughs> I mean, we're calling it a CrossFit pump session because these moves typically you don't see in a, in a commercial gym or in a bodybuilding setting. It's usually not this. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's quite a nice place to rest your hands, actually. <laughs> How you doing? For me, when I do a CrossFit pump session, I usually go for a decent amount of reps and a decent amount of sets, which is what you'll see. First thing we're doing, 10 sets, 10 reps, ring push-ups, right? Normal push-ups, you get to a range where your chest hits the floor, you can't go any further, and when you push up, your hands don't move, right? Ring push-ups, game changer. If you're one of those people that struggle with push-up volume, or if you're one of those people that struggle, uh, maybe you can get into a, a good ring muscle-up position, but you struggle to drive out of it, then you should be doing loads of these, like loads. I'm one of those people, when I do high volume ring muscle ups, I'm good at getting over, but sometimes like where I die is the dip. So I've been doing a lot of these in, in, in lockdown. Thanks babe. So I've been doing a lot of these in lockdown just because when I go back to the gym and actually start doing proper CrossFit in the gym again, I'm gonna be able to do 30 unbroken ring muscle ups. But anyway, I got sidetracked then. The good thing about the ring push up, one, brings in the little stabilizer muscles. So when you're pushing, you know, you've got to stop this. I can't. <laughs> that was bad, wasn't it? Functional fitness. <laughs> Functional fitness. <laughs> um, and also you can get like end range movement because if you think about when you catch a dip, when you're tired, a lot of the time you'll literally catch it here, not up high. And when you're extending, you can bring the rings fully in. So then you can get a good squeeze on the pec. It's, like, it's mega this. Don't go too fast in these pump sessions either. This is my, it's my fourth set. I like to do... Oh. Ain't nobody working harder than me. Good, 60 seconds rest in between each set. Easy peasy. Chest, triceps, shoulders, a little bit of core when you got your feet up. Yeah, come on scale version, don't wear a vest, don't put your feet up. Just do it. Just do it. Do it like this. Do it. <laughs> if you don't have rings, if you have a home rig, definitely get some rings. But if you don't have rings, Put like a couple of plates down you'll still get that good stretch and that good end range of motion but the one thing i am going to say is don't straight away do it in a vest because obviously if you've just been doing normal push-ups or like you come from bodybuilding and you're pretty stiff and tight in the pecs or in the shoulders coming down to this end range of motion can put your shoulders in a bit of a vulnerable position so just build up the tolerance in there before you start adding any weight basically just do a deficit push-up instead of on the ring you won't have the stability but you'll get the good range Now, next move, you can do this move on the rings, but I just find a better contraction on the bar when I do this. And you can do this at home, say if you have like a wooden broomstick that can like hold your weight, make sure it's a good new wooden broomstick and not one that you found that's 20 years old that was your dad's, that was your granddad's before that. I don't think I'd be recommending broomsticks, but at your own risk, people. <laughs> yeah, and put it between two chairs or something, you can always, you know, create a fail video if it all goes wrong. Body weight rows. How do I, I'm gonna do this. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what the f is that? The one thing that you want to focus on with this, and it's why I really like bodyweight rows, is focusing on actually contracting the back muscles, right? I see a lot of people when they do pull-ups or when they do these or when they do bent over rows, if you're one of those people that just feels it in their arms and not their back, this is a great exercise to work on it. So when you're pulling, instead of pulling with your arms like this, you see how like my shoulders literally don't move. See here, shoulders don't move, right? You want to focus and, and look at the middle of my back if I do that same movement, right? Mm -hmm. What you want to focus on when you're doing this is you want to think, pull my shoulder blades together, you see how my elbows already come back, and then drive my elbows back and down. You see how, even though I'm doing this movement on my back, right? But, which could quite easily be this one I show you, is totally different to, to this. That makes sense. Totally different but it almost looks like the same thing when you've got a t-shirt on. Well, obviously this is gonna help with pull-ups, it's gonna help with deadlifts, it's gonna help with rows, it's gonna help with things like when you're doing a clean or a snatch, keeping that bar close. So obviously when you're pulling the bar, you want that back, those middle back muscles to be engaged and strong to keep the bar close to your body when you're doing a snatch or a clean. So getting them switched on and working and active, it's very good, very nice. All right, move number two. I would just go, I would just go a little bit wider than the knurling. A couple of centimeters. Again, feet elevated. But squeeze the shoulder blades. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Elbows back. Also, I do like following like a push movement, which is like causing you to do this with a pull movement, which opens you back up again. But it's crazy, isn't it? Like this, the move can almost look the same, but how you do it makes all the difference. So just do it right. And squeeze the shoulder blades and drive the elbows back. One set of that on my back's like, woo. Five sets of 20. One of the big differences that I've seen transitioning over from bodybuilding to CrossFit is that usually in bodybuilding, a lot of the time once you've done the compound lifts, say the deadlift, the squat and the bench, you kind of then go to isolation muscles, right? And you, you end up being supported. Say, say it was like a shoulder day, you'd usually sit on a bench and your back supported, your bum supported and you're just focusing on the shoulders. Not utilizing the core as much as you want to. And obviously in CrossFit, you want a good, solid, strong core. So for this one, I mean, you get to sit on the floor, that's a win-win. And instead of being sat on a bench, where you're supported, you're sitting upright, chest up and out, and we're gonna dumbbell press here. The, <laughs> if, you are a, if you are just a normal gym goer, you may look a bit weird sat on the floor next to everyone else on the benches, but uh, I can guarantee you that you'll have a stronger abdomen and a better position. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to go as heavy, but you're gonna get more work done. I find it really hard, like my mobility in my hamstrings and my thoracic, I have to fight this, but it's good because your hip flexors and your core really work. <laughs> 10 times 10, 100 reps of this. All right, so so far we've done 300 reps. 100 push-ups in a vest, 100 rows, 100 seated dumbbell press. And now we're gonna finish off with kind of like a workout, but it's like an accessory workout. You know, you, if you come to CrossFit, you know that you're always gonna do a workout. You can't get away with it, even in the pump sessions. Five rounds, 20 V-ups, 20 banded bicep hammer curls. For time, but do it, do it well. 
Like, it doesn't matter how fast you go. For me personally, the V-Up is like the best home ab exercise just because of the functionality of it in terms of crossover to CrossFit. Like just because like not maybe not the most functional ab exercise. But when you put it with CrossFit movements like toes to bar and things like that, it's a great move. Oh, this mat's freezing! So you see like this is a bad position, okay? Yeah? What I want you to do is when you're in this position, engage that core, push the lower back into the floor. And then from there, <laughs> that, that was my back, not my tensor core. What are you laughing at me? But basically from there, tense the abs, come up with your arms, touch. Back to the floor. I'm gonna have to put a t-shirt on for this workout. <laughs> So for that you should feel a good twist and a good contraction. Take breaks as you need. And then into 20 hammer curls with a band. You can do it with dumbbells, live dumbbells, it doesn't matter. Hammer curl from here, like um, just a normal fist position, to here. No arm movement, none of this like this. Just keep your arm down by your side, squeeze. Good for the brachioradialis. If you do a lot of like chest to bar kipping, you know, and you can't do them right now because, I mean, we can't do any kipping movements in here. You'll always know if you do high volume chest to bar, the brachioradialis the next day is like an absolute agony. So this is a good way to keep it conditioned. Just 20, and I want them to just be fast, like a good pump. I mean, it looks a bit stupid, doesn't it? But trust me, five rounds of 20 and you're gonna be like screaming. 20 V-ups, 20 of those, just do it five, five times through. And when you're watching someone else do it, make sure that you got some sick songs on as well. It reminds me of holiday. And obviously after you finish your workout, make sure that your pets do the workout as well. Carla's just getting warm with her pants on. Got he's training got pants on. on. Look at them training, they're squat pants they are, just holding the glutes, don't they? And then make sure once the dog's done the fitness, you pet them. That's kind of like a functional bodybuilding session for me. Like 500 reps, 300 reps, and then in the workout at the end, it's another 200 reps, 500 reps, done in about an hour. Feel good, my abs on the V-ups. The, the fourth set of V-ups I had to break, and the fifth set of V-ups I had to break. You have the most non-functional abs. You, you I have the most non-functional abs on the abs And honestly, <laughs> V-ups are one of the things that I'm trying to do like a lot more often because for the first 60 it's all right and then after that I'm like, it's bad. But yeah, hopefully we'll go back to the box and we hopefully a lot of this stuff will carry over back into then when we go into training and it's just then getting back into the kipping routine. Us fish on bars. But yeah, if you did enjoy today's video team, as always, uh, please do smash that like button, train responsibly and train with your brain. Um, move well, you know, if you move well you're going to build muscle, if you move well you're going to stop yourself from being injured and if you move well it's going to carry over to your functional training. When you go back to the gym, muscles are going to be working, you're going to be moving better and PRs are going to be flying. One of the things I do want to highlight right at the end, as you saw today, nothing was like super fast. You know, like I wasn't trying to rep the dips, I wasn't trying to rep the shoulders, I wasn't trying to pull myself to the bar as quick as I could. It was controlled and making the muscles work. Good positional, like strength. Keeping them under tension the whole time. Catch you guys in the next one. Catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>